There's a big difference between saying that A is true if B is true and A is true only if B is true. Let's look at this difference. Here's a conditional expressed using only if. The match is burning only if there's oxygen in the room. We need to figure out which of these is the antecedent. The match is burning or there's oxygen in the room. Given what we did in the last tutorial, it's tempting to just look for the if and apply the rule, whatever comes after the if is the antecedent, and conclude that there's, there's oxygen in the room is the antecedent. But that's wrong. This isn't the antecedent. If this was the antecedent, then the sentence would be saying that if there's oxygen in the room, then the match will be burning. But if you're saying that, then you're saying that the presence of oxygen is enough to guarantee that the match is burning. That's not what's being said. What's being said is that the presence of oxygen in the room is necessary for the match to be burning. It doesn't say that it will be burning. This sentence expresses a conditional, but the antecedent of the conditional is, in fact, the match is burning. The only if makes a dramatic difference. This sentence is equivalent to the following conditional written in standard form. The only if actually reverses the direction of logical dependency. When you have only if, the claim that precedes the only if is the antecedent. What follows it is the consequent. Here's the only if rule. The antecedent doesn't come after the if, the consequent comes after the if. Let's take away the symbols and compare the if and only if rules. When you're given a conditional that uses if or only if, you look for the if, and if the if is all by itself, then the antecedent is what immediately follows the if. If the if is preceded by only, then you do the opposite. What follows the only if is the consequent. What precedes the only if is the antecedent. Once you've got that, then the rest is easy. From here, you can easily write the conditional in standard form, if A then B. Let's look at some examples. Here are two sentences. They both express conditionals. You need to write these in standard form, in the form if A then B. That requires that you identify the antecedent and the consequent in each sentence. In the first sentence, our team will kick off if the coin lands heads. The if appears by itself, so we know that what immediately follows the if is the antecedent. So we write the conditional in standard form as follows. For the second sentence, we have an only if. So we know to do precisely the opposite of what we did in the previous case. The antecedent is what precedes the only if. So you write the conditional in standard form like this. This conditional doesn't say that if you promise to take care of it, I'll buy you a puppy. It's saying that if I buy you a puppy, you can be sure that you promised to take care of it because that was a necessary condition for buying the puppy. But merely promising to take care of the puppy doesn't guarantee that I'll buy it. It might be a bit more natural to write it like this. If I bought you a puppy, then you promised to take care of it. Sometimes shifting the tenses around can be helpful in expressing conditionals like this in a more natural way. For our purposes, they mean the same thing. Here's the general rule once again. In the next tutorial, we'll look at what happens when you combine the if and only if.